Hi, my name is Justin Schaufan. I've run our engineering team here at Patch My PC. In this video, we're gonna be talking about some changes to Java runtime environment and some new licensing that now requires businesses to pay for Java runtime environment within their environment and some changes for the downloads that now require licensed customers to download that product and accept the EULA before they can download it. Now this concept will be similar for any product that requires a manual download, but today within our catalog, the only one currently is going to be Java runtime environment. So we're gonna use that for this example, but it may also apply to future products that require you to manually download them prior to being published. So what we can see here is that we have the Java download. Now, uh, since this is now a paid license app, you're gonna have to manually download this uh, offline and provide it within our publishing tool. Now, this is also uh, capable if you're using the SCCM in console publishing, and we'll review what that looks like as well. But what I've done is I've already pre-downloaded that content for that installer. So what we can see here is if I go ahead and browse to where I downloaded it, we can see that we did in fact download those JRE installers for Java 8 update 211, which is the first version that required licensing for businesses. So now that we've downloaded the installer, uh, what we're gonna notice here is that if you go into our publishing service, and we'll talk about SCCM 1806 and what this will look like for licensed products in a few minutes. But if you're using our publishing service and you come and select Java, we'll do the 64-bit version. Now, if we look at the advanced tab, since we haven't applied these settings yet, we can see that now that the checkbox has been applied for Java, let's go ahead and uncheck that. So when it's unchecked, we can see that it does not require or notify you that you have a licensed product. But now if we go ahead and enable Java 8, since it's now licensed, it's prompting us that, hey, we need to fill this out because you've enabled a licensed product. So if we clicked on apply our settings here, we can see that's prompting us that you've enabled a licensed product, so you're gonna to wanna to set the content folder that you wanna to use to search for that product content. So by default, if you, if you click and set the uh, default path, you can see that we point to localhost patch my PC repository. The reason we do that is so that we can be compatible if you're using the SCCM 1806 publishing option where it can be a specific path that any customer could use for licensed content. Now within our publishing service, you can make this any path that you want because uh, we have the ability to customize that as we're publishing the update. So within our publishing tool, we can see that I'm just using a UNC path that I have permissions for. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste that instead of using the default. And we can see that it's saying that this is a valid path, whereas the local content one is not shared yet. So that's why it was still showing up yellow because that folder did not exist within my environment. So once you provide the path of where you're going to download any licensed installers that require a manual download, you should be good here. Now, just for an example, I'm going to go ahead and set this back to nothing so that we don't have any path here. And then what I'm gonna do is go ahead and run a, new, a sync to show you what it would look like when a licensed product is unable to find the content locally. So within the log file, we can see that we now have a licensed product that could not publish. If you've enabled email notifications within the proxy and notifications tab, you're also gonna get an email saying that we cannot publish the update. So if we go ahead and look at that email, we can see here that it's saying uh, we were unable to publish Java 8 update to 11 because the content cannot be found in the local content repository. So this will just let you know, like if a new version of JRE comes out uh, and you have not previously downloaded the content prior to our publishing service running, you can at least get notified to say, hey, you know, if we want this Java runtime update, we need to download that installer into our path in order for it to be automatically published. So let me come back to our service and we're gonna go ahead and paste that path back in. And if we do a quick look, we can of course see that we've downloaded the installer files that are being referenced for that specific update. So within here, you can see that we will give you the file name of the update and this should match whatever you would get from the vendor's download portal. So now if I come back in here and run another sync, what we should see is that our publishing service is going to automatically detect the file now exists in our local repository. We will also validate the hash of the file, so it will still need to match with what the vendor provides. So you couldn't uh, just put any file name here. We, of course, still have the security checks that it needs to match with what's actually from the vendor. 
So I'll pause it while this publishes and we can validate everything looks good. So we can now see that the update did successfully publish. If I come back into my SCCM console, I have performed a software update point sync, and we can see that the 64-bit version that we enabled through our publishing service is in fact showing up with full content within the SCCM console. Now, if you're not using our publishing service and you're publishing directly using the third-party software update catalogs feature that we can see here, uh, we need to describe how that process would work as well. So what we can see is that if we look in here, we've already added a catalog that's going to download our Java update, and we can in fact see that the synchronization has already occurred, and we can see that that 32-bit version of Java is still showing metadata only. So what would happen in the event that this is a licensed uh, file that we can't publicly download, if you went and tried to manually download that installer and you look at the SMS um, ISV sync agent log. So let me go ahead and look at my server logs. And you're going to want to take a look at the SMS ISV sync agent. This should show up any second now. There we go. So we can see it was just created. So if I go ahead and open that up, we can see what's going to happen is it's going to be unable to download uh, the installer because it's pointing to a local path. Now, what we had to do in order for us to enable the local content feature that would allow all customers to use this capability, we needed a generic path that we could use for SCCM. So what we can see is that it's pointing out to a shared folder on the uh, device that's running. So we can see that it's pointing out to this patch my PC repository folder. Now this is of course failing because I haven't created a shared folder that contains that Java installer. So what I'm going to do is if I look at my machine, I have pre-created a folder under my content drive called patch my PC repository on this J drive. If we go ahead and look at that patch my PC repository folder, we can see that I have pre-downloaded those JRE installers that are uh, looking for it using that shared path. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and right click that folder, do properties, click on sharing, and I'm gonna go ahead and share this folder and then apply. Uh, the default permissions will probably work okay, so everybody will have read control. Now this would have to be on the site system running your WSUS or software update point within Config Manager because it's gonna be looking at that local folder when it's performing that content download. So if we go ahead and look at security, you also wanna make sure that the system has full control uh, since that's gonna be how it downloads. So that all looks okay. We're gonna do okay and close on here. Now, if we come back into the console and choose publish again, we'll go ahead and click on that. And we'll come back to that log file and wait for that download to kick in. All right, so this time around, now that we have that folder shared out correctly for our Patch My PC repository folder, we can now see that within the log file, we did in fact download that from the local share that we have the JRE installer for. Now, it is important to note that if you are using the SCCM 1806 in console publishing, there's no way to customize the folder name. It needs to match exactly what the folder name is within the actual update schema itself. You can't have a custom folder like we have the ability to do within our publishing service because we can dynamically detect whether it's an offline installer and we can look at that option that you can change as a custom path. So if you are using the in console publishing, the shared folder needs to be patch my PC repository on your WSUS and software update point, and you need to have it match the same file name that is being used within the log file that we can see that's looking for. So now that the download works successfully from the UNC path, we can see that it did successfully publish. So if we run a software update point sync within our console, we should see once that sync completes that the update then shows up as full content and you can deploy it as normal. All right, so our update point sync was successful. So if I go ahead and refresh, we can now see that both of these updates, so the first one was published using our publishing service, and then the second one, we just used the end console option to publish with full content. I hope this video was helpful, and this feature should allow us to start opening up uh, additional products that we couldn't support before due to offline downloads and uh, products that required a licensed portal to download. We should be able to start uh, uh, accounting for those applications within our service with this new capability that allows us to use the offline content within our publishing service. I hope this video was helpful, and thank you for watching.